Investigations Division, FID, is collecting more statements to prosecute those responsible for the multi-billion dollar fraud at Stocks and Securities Limited, SSL. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark reminded the country today that the prosecutors have been reviewing the file to determine if more persons are to be charged. The file was submitted in December 2023. I've been informed that since that time, the FID and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions have met on several occasions, including within the last month, in regards to the review of the comprehensive and voluminous SSL investigative file. Among other things, the Office of Director of Public Prosecutions has recommended that the FID collects three further statements, the process of which has already commenced. I totally understand the frustration and the, the desire for tangible results. I share these feelings too. However, I ask the public to reflect on the fact that there can be no better demonstration of transparency in this matter than our decision to procure the services of an international forensic audit firm to support an independent and thorough investigation as we have done. Now, through the partnership with Crawl, an international forensic auditing firm, the FID said over 200 accounts were affected by the SSL fraud. The fraud has exceeded 30 million U.S. dollars, or roughly 4.7 billion Jamaican dollars. The government is asking for patience as investigators and prosecutors review the findings. Jean Ann Panton, a former client relationship officer at SSL, is facing several charges, including forgery, larceny, as a servant and engaging in a transaction involving criminal activity. In this video, we take a look at this legal showdown between the Prime Minister of Jamaica, Andrew Hovnes, and the Integrity Commission, as well as a motion of no confidence that was about to be tabled by the opposition leader, Mark Golden, but this motion was not allowed to be tabled. So let's watch this video and listen to exactly what happened and we'll come back here and discuss further about it. But before we watch the video, if you haven't yet liked this video, kindly like the video and also subscribe to the channel. Let's watch the videos together. ...to move a no confidence motion in Gordon House, in the House of Representatives. Uh, I was prevented from doing so um, on what I regard to be a spurious basis, a basis that cannot hold water. The basis that was put forward was that the matters on which my motion was based are now sub judice, in other words, because the Prime Minister has apparently sought judicial review of certain matters arising from what the Integrity Commission has decided in relation to his matter. However, my motion is not dealing with the substance of that report, but is dealing with his own conduct as Prime Minister. And I wish to read the motion now so you can hear it. Whereas there is a ministerial code of conduct in place from 2002 that governs the conduct of members of the cabinet, and whereas the Prime Minister did not inform the people of Jamaica that he was being investigated by the Integrity Commission from as far back as August 2023 for illicit enrichment, and whereas the concealment of this information by the Prime Minister is a breach of the Ministerial Code of Conduct that guided the Prime Minister in removing from office ministers serving in the Cabinet over which he presided, and whereas the annual reports of the Integrity Commission for 22-23 and for 23-24, stated that several members of parliament, initially six and then eight, were under investigation for illicit enrichment, but none had come forward to disclose that he or she was under investigation. And whereas the Integrity Commission's investigation report on the 17th September 2024 tabled in parliament named the Prime Minister as being under investigation for illicit enrichment. And whereas the Prime Minister, as Chairman of Cabinet, instructed members of Cabinet not to divulge the name of any member under investigation for illicit enrichment, 
contrary to the spirit of the Ministerial Code of Conduct, and whereas the actions of the Prime Minister have caused and continue to cause severe damage to the trust necessary for good order and respect for public office. Be it resolved that this Honourable House condemns the Prime Minister for not maintaining ethical standards of transparency and openness in government. Secondly, censures the Prime Minister for his acts of covering up and concealment of the names, including his own, of those members of the Cabinet and or Parliament, of which he was and may still be aware, but has kept them in positions of influence in the Cabinet with the effect of further undermining public trust in the institutions of government, and declares that the actions of the Prime Minister have severely undermined his credibility and trustworthiness, and that he no longer enjoys the confidence of this House. That was the motion that was to be put forward today and hopefully debated next week. We did not want it, we did, we did not want it debated the same day that it was tabled. The Prime Minister is not here in Jamaica. That would not be right or proper. However, we were not allowed to proceed with the tabling of the motion because they, well, the Speaker herself had removed herself because the matter affected her husband. And the Deputy Speaker um, ruled that the motion was improperly brought in breach of the standing orders, relying on the subjudicate rule, and so the motion will not go forward. And we think that that is an abuse of the rules of Parliament and no, sh no confidence motions have a very high place in our constitutional arrangements. If a no confidence motion is passed in Parliament, the Governor General has to dissolve Parliament and call elections. So that, and that is, that is in section, I think, 64 of the Constitution, subsection 5. So for them to block the opposition from bringing a motion on the alleged basis that the matter is subjudicate is really, in my view, a bad and sad day for our democracy. Again, it's an example of freedom of speech, freedom of association, our democratic... Opposition members walked out of the House after opposition leader Mark Golding had been blocked from moving a motion relating to what Prime Minister Andrew Holness had said about his statutory declarations. When opposition leader Mark Golding rose to move the motion, House Speaker Juliet Holness excused herself from the sitting, leaving her deputy, Heroy Clark, to preside over the matter. Whereas <coughs> there is a ministerial code of conduct in place from 2002 that governs the conduct of members of the cabinet, and whereas the prime minister did not inform the people of Jamaica that he was being Member. investigated Member. by the integrity. Member, please. I don't even need to hear another word. If the member in any way intends to go down a road, that is, you can't understand if you don't listen. Permit yourself to use your ears and not your mouth. If it is that the member intends to travel down a road, that is, going to breach the standing orders in raising matters. Let me just say it. Let me just say it before. That are subjudicate. I t Hold on. I'm just telling you. That cannot be accommodated in this house. Remember, you start on a premise. And as far as the standing order is concerned, I hear the first part of where you're going. Deputy House Speaker Heroy Clark used Section 22.3 of the Standing Orders, stating that the motion being moved by Mr. Golding is out of order. He also used the UK Parliamentary Handbook Erskine May to state that matters before the courts... Welcome back. So in this video, we looked at this legal showdown between the Prime Minister of Jamaica, Andrew Hones, and the Integrity Commission of Jamaica. So the Integrity Commission of Jamaica is tagged with the responsibility of assessing the wealth and assets of public officials before they got into office and during their time in office as well. Now the companies of the Prime Minister, Andrew Hones, was investigated and some anomalies or discrepancies were found. The Integrity Commission, however, recommended that 
an independent body should be contracted in order to work on investigations into the discrepancies of the financial accounts and financial standings of the companies of the prime minister because there were some discrepancies in it so this implicates the prime minister of jamaica and so when this report was brought into the public domain the prime minister has also taken a legal action against the integrity commission his lawyers has actually filed a lawsuit at the Supreme Court in Jamaica in order to strike the legal backing or the law or the act that backs the Integrity Commission to probe people in public office. So that is what the Prime Minister of Jamaica, Andrew Holness, is seeking to do. Now, as to whether this is right, is a bit questionable. Now, the opposition leader, McGoldin, decided to table a motion so that there will be a vote of no confidence because he believes that the prime minister has breached some laws. Now, what he believes that the prime minister has breached was that for any public officials who is under investigation by the integrity commission the general public should be made aware of it meanwhile the prime minister concealed this information and directed that the integrity commission should not bring to the general public the names of people who were under investigation including himself so this is a breach of the law that people should get to know who is under investigation by the integrity commission meanwhile the prime minister directed that this information should be concealed so the opposition leader mcgolden decided that a, a motion should be tabled in parliament in order for a vote of no confidence to be cast now, when this was suggested, the deputy speaker, the speaker of parliament for Jamaica is the wife of the prime minister. So she excused herself out of the sitting during that time. And then the deputy speaker who took over did not allow this motion to be tabled. So the opposition walked out of parliament and when the speaker of parliament returned she said that she would have allowed them to table the motion and discuss or debated it if she was presiding on the issue meanwhile her deputy did not allow for this motion to be tabled there are a lot of questions that this raises one for the discrepancies to occur in the financial account or financial statements of the companies of the prime minister the accounts that were found in the integrity reports to be owned by the prime minister andrew holness and also taking legal action trying to strike the law back in the integrity commission by the prime minister andrew holness all these are very questionable and all these are very fishy let me know what you think about all these in the comment section below share your general thoughts and opinions about this incident that is happening in jamaica and also don't forget to share this video to your friends and your family on whatsapp twitter that is x instagram and other social media platforms. Also, subscribe to the channel. Just click the subscribe button down here. Click on the subscribe button. Click as well on the notification bell. And I'd like to see you again in my next video.